I want to take you on a tour of my urban homestead so that you can see what is growing in Maureen's garden. What's going on today, Maureen? The temperatures are mild, so it's not so hot. I actually, I don't need to wear this much clothing, but I do it just because I love the red. And we've got a great cloud cover over top because we had rain. So that means I don't have to do any watering, which I'm happy about. It's been about two weeks since I started planting and everything, well, I think everything is in the garden. Yay! So I want to take you on a tour of my urban homestead so that you can see what is growing in Maureen's garden. And also because next month I'll be able to compare the two videos when I do another tour. You won't see much of me in the video because I do want to show you everything that is growing. Come along. We'll start with a panoramic and then we'll go into some details. We're going to start with the potato bed. These were planted at the end of March. And then right in front of them here are my watermelons. And this one has grown exponentially. Look at that. Mama's got her flowers, broke farmer. So watermelons all along here. And then I've got pumpkins all along here with another watermelon at the end. And we are gonna be adding some trellises because there are other melons. I cover this hill with coffee sacks because the bindweed is so, so bad here. All the potatoes are grown directly in straw and we just did a mounding up and so we can actually have a bit of path, but I'm very excited about this. This is a red grape and this is the first year that I've ever seen grapes are coming. So this red one has lots on it. It is just a table red is what it's called. Probably has more of a scientific name. I didn't keep that information. And then right next door to it, this is a white grape and it as well has grapes coming. We are gonna get some grapes. My third one, I do know this is a Gewürztraminer because it is one of my favorite wines. This one, uh, it does not look like we are gonna have any grapes on it yet. As we look down, I did plant over 700 garlic cloves. So let's have a look at those. These are the store-bought garlic cloves. These ones over here where they're big and more robust, these are the seed ones. And also some are from my last year's stock. The seed from the grocery store, it bloomed up fast. It is the end of May and the scapes are already starting to curl. So I'm seeing that the stalks are not that big, but I am going to be putting some poo, poo juice on them, hoping that over the next month that the feeding will help them out. Let's move on to the squashes. The squashes have been in just over a week and they're looking great. Kabuta squash. This grow bag has got four spaghetti squashes in it. And we have put in these low-lying trellises so that I have just another space for the spaghetti squash to go because the rest of them will cascade in around. And then I've got my patty pans, crookneck squash. Uh, there's another wild watermelon. And I think this is probably carnival squash. Then some acorn squash. In here is two more spaghetti squashes and two zucchinis in that grow bag. Oh, by the way, this grow bag has ginger in it. Probably more carnival or acorn. And then the last again were yellow crookneck squash and patty pans, another kabuta squash. And in this one, again, another spaghetti squash. So this is my Jerusalem artichokes or sunchokes. This gets really, 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 really tall. And it's an absolute showstopper. But the first year I grew it, we ate it. I didn't find that I had any difficulties with it, but my kids all got a little gassy and they said, let's not do it again. So then we've tried fermenting it. Uh, at the time of ferment fermentation, we ferment so much of it and it's off to the side and then we tend to forget about it. And so then it goes bad, we throw it out. So I thought, I'm not growing it this year. Hmm. All that's in there is whatever is inside. So I think there is some roots or whatever, and I just get this beautiful plant. So mama said it can stay, so it stays. 
benches that we built for sitting out here when I need to take a break. And then this is where I'm going to grow my yams. So I've got my yams in there, some slips, they are looking okay. I have actually buried the entire potato in hopes that they will actually grow from here. So I don't know. This first one here, it doesn't have a potato under it, but this one still has its potato. Uh, I didn't get any roots out of it. This is an overview of what we call the Midyard. So I have an olive tree, some gallardia, and then some snow in summer that is trying to make its way back. But for here, what I'm excited about are my elderberry trees. So I have multiple varieties of elderberries in here. And then there is more over there. Last year we did get berries, but we were leaving them but then some little friend came and picked them and ate them. So we fed some little animal. This was one of those four fruit trees, but I think it's just turned into a plum tree. I'm super excited about this one. This is my peach tree. And I think for the first time, I'm gonna get some peaches on there. Not too many, but peaches nonetheless. Because it's not like it's apples, right? Mm -hmm. The peaches that I've had in the past, I had in the backyard and it wasn't doing well. And then someone said that peaches don't like to get rained on. So I have put it here under my eaves. So I think that's helping. So mama's gonna get herself some peaches this year. I ended up with some extra loofahs. So this loofah got planted in the pot and he is gonna be on this trellis. These are the benches that my daughter and I built. Not that I grew it, but I do love this magnolia tree. And the blossoms are coming in. There's three right here, nice and close. So I'll be able to put my nose right in there and sniff all of that lemony goodness. Don't mind the mess there. I'm in the process of washing three years of planter pots and red solo cups. Starting with my little pepper bed and you're saying, uh, where's the peppers, Maureen? Yeah, I really struggled with those this year, but they are in ground and so we, but I have faith in you little peppers. You'll come up. So this is cayenne, jalapeno, and bird's eye chili. Planted in some alyssum throughout because that's just a really great little ground cover. I'm excited about this. This is a honey crisp apple tree. I bought it last year. And so it does have apples on it. I am very hopeful that we are going to get to eat those apples. Last year on my espalier tree, the rats got to everything. So I didn't get any apples at all. But this year I'm gonna try a little trick. So keep watching so that you can see if my little trick worked for all of my fruit. I've got lights on this arbor, which I just love. But this is my kiwi, which did produce fruit last year. Also last year I bought this one and this is a grape style kiwi. And we have fruit on it. And taking the path up and leading into garden bed number three. This is my espalier tree here. And this is the one that they just ate all my apples bef before I could pick them. So we've got carrots here. We've got two types of cabbage here. I've got a zucchini and a zucchini. And then in the back, I've got three pickling cukes. And then of course, over in this little corner here, I'm gonna have some bush beans. For those of you that have been wondering about the carrots in the cornstarch gel, here we've got our carrots that have come up all along, not the big one. That big one is from last year. These big ones are all from last year, but I do have the carrots. Garden bed number three. So in here I have planted more carrots, but using the carrots that are on tape, also a Japanese type of radish and my turnips. Here is my corn looking beautiful. And then in the back, that is all pickling cukes. And they've got this tall, tall trellis to climb up. Mm -hmm. 
peony is almost finished flowering. She's so beautiful. Uh, melons and pots that are over there because I started too many melons. And then crossing over, garden bed number one. These are all slicing style cucumbers. And then that is another pepper pot alley. Those peppers are looking better because I had planted them up. See this pepper and that pepper are doing okay. This one, he just keeps doing that. And uh, so I just thought I'll leave them, but I think it's time to say goodbye. But yeah, these peppers in my pepper alley, they look pretty good. Nasturtium, extra tomatoes. In here, I have some celery, some broccoli. Uh, if you recall from a previous video, uh, there was something that was in my ground and someone said, I think it's a potato. You were absolutely correct. I did go and purchase a butternut squash, so he's in there and he'll be able to ramble in and around the broccoli. So there is one variety of broccoli here. The other variety of broccoli is here. Some of it, you know, as you can see, that one's a little bit struggly. In the back is my bok choy and my su choy. The su choy is trying to go to flower because it is too hot because I need those broccolis to come up. On the other side of garden bed number one where I have the trellis, here we have our Romana pole beans. This is a little extra something something as is this one and I don't know what they are. And then on this side is where I've got my scarlet runner beans. And so they have come up beautifully in here and they can climb up this trellis. So from the other angle of this bed. And besides garden bed number two, I have the extra tomato plants that I couldn't put into ground. So they went into pots and they do have those wire racks. These are all indeterminate. So I will be stacking another wire on top. So just using the welded wire, I uh, make a circle around, zip tie it, and you see I can have it so that it's nice and tall. These ones are still short right now for these cucumbers, but I will add a second level if it's necessary. Something I'm really proud of, my orchard. Come and see it, it's so cute. This is my orchard. We have a cherry bush that is here. Uh, some more watermelony things that are in here. They're not gonna be in here later. But these Meyer lemons here all along the side, the five, these ones I grew from seed from this original Meyer lemon. Beside him is a key lime, the calamandan orange, a plum tree that I have grown from seed. This is an avocado that I didn't know that I had. I thought it was just a tree, almost killed it, and it's come back and this is the biggest I've ever seen my avocado. And rounding up our little orchard are these two columnar trees. They're two different varieties. There is fruit coming on it. Now a columnar tree is something that is growing in that column so it doesn't get wide branches. So these trees are good for urban centers or when you have a small area. They're not going to branch out. is beside my chicken coop where I have my asparagus and strawberries and then I've planted a loofah there and a loofah there so that they can climb up this here. This is a really great hot spot for them and if I need to make some additional trellises I will. That's my rain catchment for today. Everybody say hi! You guys caught some water in that bucket too? Thank you ladies! Last garden bed of the backyard is my three-tiered garden where I have radishes and some Swiss chard and in behind there in the straw is the okra. All the tomatoes are looking beautiful as is the lettuce. This Swiss chard here is from last year. Oh, there's another little potato. And so I am probably gonna take that out and add some more Swiss chard because we really do enjoy it. Some fennel. These are called Hascap. They are really great for cooler climates. Uh, it is in the blueberry family. It has higher antioxidants than what your blueberries do. Another little berry row leading up to more blueberries. This 
here is called Angelica. It is a really great medicinal herb and I got it from a little girl who was growing them last year, which is great. And my olive tree. I do believe I have four olive trees on the property. I made just a little row of herbs here. So some cilantro, some tarragon, an artichoke. Those three I bought. I did grow the chamomile, chamomile more artichoke. These are little white strawberries or alpine strawberries and they are just looking fabulous. Which leads us to our potting bench and all the lettuces and I have been picking the lettuce. It's wonderful. Got lots of curly parsley, some onion tops, some dill. In here is going to be some holy basil, lots of cilantro. Uh, this was a pot that had potatoes growing out of it, so we just left it. And some sage, lemon balm, oregano, another type of oregano, and lavender. And then my strawberry tower is coming along beautifully. Hello, sweet Betty. Oh, I forgot to mention, so this here climbing up is a wisteria, and I absolutely love them. This is the first year that I've ever seen it come with some flowers. It is a little bit late, I think, in the season to be flowering, but nonetheless, I'm very, very happy. The beans are looking great. I did throw a little bit of basil in there, a little bit of basil in there, so the one bean there. These are bush beans. So one last look. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Take care. God bless.